I'm Jo London. Welcome to the Small Steps to Help You Manage Your Diabetes series. And this is episode one, Living with Diabetes Today. Learning you have diabetes can be an overwhelming event, yet at least one in 14 Americans will have to deal with this reality. This episode has been developed to help you understand the basics of the disease and provide some small steps you can take so that you and your healthcare team can better manage your diabetes. Enjoy. In this show, we'll go to the home of a woman with diabetes and spend a day with her and her family, giving our advice to help manage some of the lifestyle changes her doctor has asked her to make. Diabetes isn't like other health problems that you may have had in the past. It's chronic. It doesn't go away like a cold or the flu. So the more you know about it, the easier it will be to control. Now, we are here to help you learn the basics of diabetes, as well as how a few simple lifestyle changes may help you get closer to your goals. Here are the basic facts about diabetes. There are two main types, type one and type two. When you have diabetes, your body can't properly use the energy from the food you eat. The problem is closely tied to how your body makes and uses insulin. Insulin is a hormone made in your pancreas that helps your blood sugar remain in a normal range. In type one diabetes, your body makes little or no insulin. In type two diabetes, your body makes insulin, but your cells can't use it as well. This is called insulin resistance. Also, your ability to make insulin will likely decrease over time. This is insulin deficiency. Even though there is no cure for diabetes, it is controllable. The key is keeping your blood sugar as close to normal as possible. You can do this through good meal planning, physical activity, and in many cases, medicines. Your doctor is a critical resource in helping manage your diabetes. But you may have other resources. Your diabetes team may include a diabetes educator, a registered dietitian, your pharmacist, a fitness specialist, an eye specialist, foot doctor, and a mental health specialist, depending on your needs. And beyond that, your family and your friends are there to support you. Lisa Jennings was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes just over three months ago at the age of 57. Her daughter, Wendy, recently wrote us and asked if there was anything we could do to help Lisa achieve some of the goals that she and her doctor have set, such as eating healthier and being more active. Lisa's been trying hard and doing pretty well, but she could use a little help with just how to achieve those goals. I stopped by and met her family to get a little more information. First of all, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. When I wrote you and I told mom, she was pretty excited. Um, she was all for it, so this is, this is just gonna be great. Um, it's been, what, a little over three months mm -hmm. that she's been dealing with this? And for the most part, she's doing pretty well. But I asked for your help because sometimes I feel like she's getting a little frustrated and she's trying. Um, and she's doing everything she thinks she should be doing, but you, you just don't know if um, she could be doing more, if she's getting closer to her goals, or could be getting closer to her goals, or just what's working. So I thought you guys could come in, meet her, and just give her some advice, or tips, or pointers, or whatever, just to make things a little easier for her. You know, anything you could do would be great. Lisa wants to be more active and uh, have more energy. She wants her doctor to be pleased with her progress. But sometimes she just doesn't know what to do. She could uh, really use some more pep with this one running around. The doctor wants her to lose 30 pounds, and I think she's been doing great. She already lost 10 pounds. But 30 pounds is, is quite a goal, and I just don't know how she's going to get there. When mom was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, I started reading about it, and obviously she did too. But we're just so glad you're going to give us some hands-on help. 
It's hard, I know. She's so busy with her job and the grandkids taking care of me. It's not easy for her to find time for herself. She really needs to. Well, here we are at Lisa's house just outside of Los Angeles, ready to give her a diabetes makeover. Ready, guys? Hey, we're ready. Ready. Let's go. go meet her. Hi, Lisa. Hi. <laughs> great to see you. Oh, it's so great to see all of you. Oh, please, please, come on in. All right. Hi, guys. Hi. Now, I've spoken to you guys, but I want you to meet our team. Juan Carlos Cruz, master chef and calorie commando, and best-selling author and Hi. fitness expert, Bob Green. He can motivate you. Oh. Hi. Of course, I know all of you, because I watch you all the time. But I got to ask you guys, I am just a little nervous and, and very excited at the same time. What do you have in store for me today? There is nothing to be nervous about today, Lisa. We're going to take some of the things that you and your doctor have agreed upon to manage your diabetes. We're going to show you how to make them easier. I, I know it sounds like a lot of hard work, but a few victories make it seem a lot easier. Okay. I am all for getting better and doing better, but um, I'm always really good at you know, starting out and doing well for a little while and then, you know, things seem to get better and then life just seems to get in the way and I forget to do my walking or I forget to watch what I eat. We completely understand. Most people are up against the same thing regardless of diabetes. We don't want you to radically change what you do. So today's about small steps you can take to keep you moving in the right direction. These small steps add up and can help you make even more progress. Okay, well that sounds, that sounds perfect. Well, I'll be back in a little bit to show you some things you can do to be more active. And Juan Carlos will spend some time with you in the kitchen. But first, you're going to go with Joan where she can go over some basics. And you can ask her any questions you guys may have. You ready to go? Yep, well, I'm yours. All right, guys. Come this way. <laughs> So first, let's start with some of the questions that you all have about diabetes, and you can ask anything you want. There's no silly question. Um, so first off, what causes diabetes and what happens when you have it? Well, in type 2 diabetes, which is what you have, Lisa, your cells can't use the sugars in your blood for fuel. Now what happens then is the sugar builds up in your bloodstream because it's not being used. Without sugar for fuel in your cells, your body lacks energy. So it's kind of if you filled up your car with gas, but the gas couldn't get to the engine to be burned, it wouldn't run. And so what does that do? Well, it means that the sugar stays in your blood, so you have high blood sugar levels. And over time, that can damage your blood vessels and your nerves, resulting in some pretty serious problems. So what causes it? The exact cause isn't known, but we do know that it's more common in people who are over 40, who are overweight, have a family history of diabetes, or have high blood pressure. Also, some ethnic groups like African Americans, Hispanics, Pacific Islanders, and Asian Americans are at greater risk. So those are the basics of type 2 diabetes. Our main goal here today is to show you some of the simple life changes that can help you control your blood sugar levels. So before meals, people with diabetes should have a blood sugar level between 90 and 130 milligrams. And your diabetes care team helps you set the blood sugar target range that is right for you. So how do I know if I'm on target? Well, there are two good ways to find out if your diabetes is in control. The first is to check your blood sugar. And you can do this by using one of the many blood glucose meters that are available. And you should also discuss with your doctor or your diabetes educator what your testing schedule should be. Now, they may advise you to check before meals and at bedtime. They may also suggest checking one to two hours after meals so that you can monitor your progress. And it is a great idea to keep track of your results so that you and your diabetes care team can better understand any trends. What's the second test? All right, that second test is a blood test that actually your doctor will do. It's called A1C, and that shows your average blood sugar level over a two to three month period. Okay, so that is a different test than the one that I take at home. That's right. Okay. All right, you think you got just the basics down here? All right, <laughs> then it's time to go to the kitchen where Juan Carlos is going to take you through one of the most important aspects of diabetes, that's meal planning. 
Let's take a look around and see what you have on hand. Okay. Well, I love to eat. You know, I mean, basically, I know what I should and I shouldn't be eating, but sometimes I just eat what's convenient, and mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. when I have those crazy and really busy days that I have a lot. I mean, I barely have time to eat anything at all, let alone eat something that might be good for me. Um, you know, it's just hard. But if there's any suggestions you have to make it any easier, I mean, that would be great. Well, that's just what I'm going to do. In spite of what you've heard, having diabetes doesn't mean having to give up all the food you love. No one's asking you to do that. You're still going to be able to eat your favorite foods. Good. All right. The key is to eat the right foods in the right amount. And when you can, try to eat a little healthier. Now, what I mean by healthier is uh, you take your favorite recipes mm -hmm. and exchange some of the normal ingredients that you normally have for ones that are a little better for you. Okay, so I'm still going to be able to eat, huh? Yes, you're still going to be able yes. to eat some of your favorite foods. Okay. You just need to understand how different foods, portions, and the time you eat will affect your blood sugar. Okay. So these are some of the things I pulled out of your pantry and your fridge, and, you, and you've got some good stuff. You've got some, some uh, chicken breast, you've got some tomatoes, you've got some uh, bell peppers, some whole grain bread, some rice, some cereal. This is all good stuff. What I really want to talk to you about isn't as much about what you eat, but as in how you eat. When and how much can be every bit as important as what you eat. First, you shouldn't skip meals. Eat three well-balanced meals a day. Okay, so eat my breakfast. Eat your breakfast. And eat lunch and eat dinner. Every day. Spread them out, but don't skip. And make them well-balanced. And by well-balanced, I mean you should eat a variety of foods in each meal. Picture a dinner plate. Mm -hmm. All right, on one half of that plate, you should have your uh, non-starchy vegetables and try to make some colorful ones like, um, like peppers and broccoli and spinach. Now, on the other half, fourth of that plate should be uh, your lean meat, your chicken, your fish. That last fourth, that's where you have your starchy foods or carbohydrates like uh, rice and pasta and potatoes and your whole grain bread. Now, I'm not talking take a plate and pile it with food. People tend to eat too much because their portions are too big. I mean, as kids, what do we talk? Clean the plate. But we put too much on that plate. So within those halves and those fourths, you should be aware of portion size. Okay. Easy way to think of it. Uh, for your lean meat, mm -hmm. your portion size should be about the size of the palm of your hand. Okay. For your starches, your carbohydrates, should be about the size of a closed fist. Mm -hmm. And the portion for your vegetables, should be about the size of an open hand, as should your fruit. Wow, I mean, that's, that's great. It's an easy way to think about it. Um, so which of these are carbs? Because I think that I have to be focused on the amount of carbs that I eat. Well, carbohydrates are in a lot of the foods we eat, like vegetables and fruit and milk and yogurt, rice, cereal, other grains. Carbs are important to have balanced throughout the day and not to have them all at once. All right. Let's see what we can make with what you have. And let's make something delicious. Okay. So do you like shrimp? Love shrimp. You love shrimp. And especially love uh, shrimp scampi. This is very much like shrimp scampi. I think you and, uh, I think you and Bert are going to like this. Okay. All right. Take a little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. Just to put a little tiny bit in, about a tablespoon. Now keep in mind, about, right there is perfect. Okay. And if you need to measure, measure. A tablespoon is about 120 calories. Okay. So just that, that for your edification. We are going to put in some bell peppers. Okay. Now bell, pe bell peppers are wonderful because it's a great source of vitamin C. Let that all just, ooh, just all the sizzling sound there. Let's get the onions. Now you can use red onions. Uh, I just have some sweet onions here, some Vidalia onions. Now this is going to give us color and texture, uh, exactly what we're looking for. When we were talking about all the, 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 the plates and filling them up yeah. with colors into a lot of your fibrous stuff here. It's just mwah, beautiful. And it smells good too. It does smell good. Got some garlic right over here. Okay. Now, like I said before, we crush this garlic. Uh -huh. If you have the pre-crushed stuff, that's that's fine. I like to crush it, but uh, six of one, half dozen of another. Okay. So this is this is looking wonderful. While that's while that's sweating down, I've got some flavor here. I got some Canadian bacon. Okay. Go ahead and bring that on over. Okay. Let's go ahead and put that in. Good. Yep. Now give this a good swirl around. Mix it around. Let's add our whole can of crushed tomatoes. And we're going to let this simmer together. 
Now we want to get some Ooh. more flavor in there, some Italian seasoning. Uh -huh. I got some Italian seasoning. I don't want you reaching over. So okay. I got some Italian seasoning right here, and I will sprinkle that in. And I'm a great lover of different seasonings. Now, as this comes up to a simmer here, mm -hmm. we want to put our protein in. What's our protein today? Our protein is shrimp today. Shrimp. And Bert likes shrimp. And uh, you like shrimp. Yes, everybody likes shrimp. Everybody likes shrimp. Here we go. Okay. Let's drop our shrimp in. Now, I love using shrimp because it cooks really quick. Give that a swish around. Okay. Oh, really swish it oh, around. All right. There you go. Don't be shy. We'll give this about, about a minute and a half. Okay. And all the shrimp, once the shrimp pull together nice uh -huh. and tight, it'll be done. So we're going to serve this over some asparagus. Now, all I did was I blanched off some asparagus. Okay. All blanching is, is quickly cooking with moisture. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon juice to this to give it a little, a little more of a kick. Okay. And I'll just mm -hmm. swish this around. Just keep swishing. <laughs> Looks great. Actually, I think they're just about done. Yeah, it does look that they, way. They look done. Let's pour that right onto our asparagus. Should I give you the honors? You want to give me the honors? I was I hoping do. you'd be brave enough. <laughs> All right, no sweat. And here we are. It's served six, but there's just such a great amount of textures and flavors and low uh, lean, lean proteins is what I want to say. Uh-huh. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Serve this with a little bit of garnish, a little lemons. And some limes. And some limes. Oh, what the heck, we'll go the other way. Okay. And of course, making it look pretty, because you do eat with your eyes first. That's true. So, think Bert's going to be surprised? He's going to be surprised and <laughs> hungry at the same he, time. And he's going to be pleased. Yes. Yes. Like dessert? Yes, love it. Bert like dessert? Loves it. Family like dessert? Love it. Good, because we're going to make dessert. <laughs> Good. We're going to make a pear crisp that will knock their socks off, and it doesn't have as many fat and calories as how you normally make it. Okay. You ready? Yep. Okay. First trick I'm going to show you. We got our little pan here. Uh -huh. That's not the trick. <laughs> the trick is that we take some butter-flavored cooking spray. Mm -hmm. All right. Now count 1-1,000, 2-1,000 okay. while I'm spraying, okay? 1-1,000, 2-1,000. Very cool. Okay. Now. What we just did, normal recipe would take about, uh, oh, two tablespoons of butter. Uh -huh. Remember I told you a, a tablespoon of butter was 120 calories? Right. All right. right. Every one second spray there is seven calories. <laughs> so it's a huge savings right there. So we can add a little fat somewhere else and have some flavor and not need that. Let's get our pears. I'm going to get this a little closer to you so you can work with it. Put these in? Yep. Put our pears right in the pan. Okay. Now, I like adding some more flavors, textures, colors. So? Sun-dried cranberries. Oh, they're Some people call them craisins, sun-dried cranberries. Oh, delicioso. They're adding a little, actually, they're, they're packed with vitamin C. It's one of the reasons I've used them. Now, let's make the topping for this. Okay. I'm going to trade you again. All right. I got my bowl right here. Okay. I've got some rolled oats. Let's put some rolled oats right into the bowl. Okay. A little bit of flour. Again, flour right into the bowl. Just give that a good swoosh around. I got two tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay. Let's add our brown sugar in. Smash our brown sugar in. We're going to need a little flavor in this. Uh, cinnamon sound good? Cinnamon sounds good. Cinnamon sounds very good. Hey, look, I happen to have some cinnamon. <laughs> Ooh, you keep swishing, okay. and I will sprinkle gently. <laughs> there we go. Give that a good, Ooh, good. Doesn't that, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Now, you don't need a whole lot of salt in this, oh, all right. but we're just going to take a little bit of salt to uh, bring the flavor out. Okay. That's all you need. Okay. And we are going to add our cubed butter. Real butter. Okay. Nothing, nothing weird here. All Real right. butter. Here, pick that last one out. There you go, with your fingers. Okay. And just cube it up. Just get in there and, and just and crunch just it up. Exactly. All it's right. just like you're making a pie dough, and when it's nice and crumbly, what I want you to do is add all this, just kind of sprinkle it on top. All right. You don't have to be extremely fastidious. All right. Yeah, I'll make it make it look. Uh, I'll I'll Oops. help you with my immaculately clean hands. <laughs> there you go. Now we are going to put this in a 375 degree oven. Uh huh. It should be done about the time Bert comes in, and when he comes in, he can enjoy the food you made. Thank you. Hey. So what do you think of everything I made here? You made. Yes, she made. You're a lucky man. Lisa here is a wonderful cook. 
But you both could make a lot of great simple meals with the food you probably already have. There are thousands of recipes out there that you can make very easily to help you manage your blood sugar. Remember, most people eat better, feel better, and have more energy when they eat on a regular schedule every day. Spacing food throughout the day also helps you stay at a healthy weight. Now, I think it's Bob's turn to talk to you about physical activity and how important it is. All right. If I just stay here and not eat. All right, Lisa, now it's time to work off some of that great food Juan Carlos showed you how to make. <laughs> okay. Now, I know you've lost some weight recently. Uh, congratulations, that's a great start. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I lost about 10 pounds, and uh, I'd like to lose some more. Well, I'll show you some things to keep you moving in the right direction. As your doctor already told you, being active is an important part of anyone's routine, especially people with diabetes. It can reduce stress, increase energy, and help make you feel better all around. It's also a good way to help control your blood pressure and blood fats, or lipids. Well, I was a, a cheerleader in high school, but that was just, well, a little while back. <laughs> but now, even walking the dog has gotten pretty tiring. And the grandkids, I mean, you know how much energy they take up. But I have tried so many times, even before I got diabetes, um, but it never seemed to stick. How do I get started again, and how do I make myself stick with it? And it's been so long now that I don't even know what's safe for me to do. The first thing you want to do is get a medical checkup. It's especially important for those over 35. Are you over 35? <laughs> uh, yeah, just barely. We'll call it 39. Well, then it's important for people over 35 like you, barely, mm -hmm. and for people with any health concerns in addition to diabetes. But then the main thing is to find something you enjoy doing because then you'll be more likely to stick with it. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't try to do overdo it and that it's bright for your current fitness level. Is there anything you can think that you really enjoy? Well, uh, like I said, I like walking around the neighborhood with my dog, Molly. <laughs> Great, walking is probably my favorite exercise to get started. It's convenient, doesn't cost anything, except maybe for a good pair of shoes and a good pair of socks, and you've already got that covered. Mm -hmm. But before we even get to the walking, you want to do some stretching because flexibility goes right along with strengthening and aerobic activity like walking, jogging, or biking. Come on, let me show you a few things. Now, again, my problem is that I'm real good at doing it for a few weeks and then something comes up and just gets in the way. Hey, you're not alone. If you make being active part of your routine, just like a meal or a meeting, mm -hmm. or going to work, it's easier to stick with. It also helps to find someone to do it with because it makes it more enjoyable and you can keep each other motivated. And if you skip a few days, just try to pick it up uh, as soon as you can. Okay, well you mentioned strengthening, and I'm not so sure that I can bench press 300 pounds right now. <laughs> I'm not up to 300 pounds either. But don't worry, you don't have to live in a gym or lift a lot of weights. Okay. Just using inexpensive uh, resistance bands works really well. Like this. You do your curls. Okay. And if you don't have a band, anything available, soup cans can actually be a good workout. You can do your curls with soup cans. Soup cans, are you serious? Absolutely, lifting anything like this can be good for you. And if it's right in front of you, maybe you'll be more likely to do it. You feeling good and warmed up? I think so. Good, let's go for a walk. Where's Molly? Uh, she's outside, let's go on. Just start off with uh, five or 10 minutes and see how mm -hmm. you feel. Okay. How you doing right now? I feel fine. All right, this is a good pace. Uh, just keep up the good work and uh -huh. uh, always um, pack some hard candy like peppermint, something like that, just okay. in case your blood sugar gets uh, gets low. Uh -huh. Also, be sure to drink plenty of water. Okay. Well, I feel fine now, but is there anything that I should be looking out for? Well, aside from low blood sugar, if you experience leg cramps or chest pains, mm -hmm. stop exercising immediately okay. and call your physician. Uh huh. So if you're cleared for exercise, then it's time to go a little bit longer and a little bit faster. Uh, okay, okay. Did you hear that, Molly? Molly. You're gonna help your mom get she's, moving more. She's keeping up. Come on, Molly. <laughs> oh, she's pulling me. All right, looks great. <laughs> so what do you think so far? Have you learned some new things? Oh, oh yeah. Absolutely. Like way more than I knew before. <laughs> really? Well, I want to hear from you. What have you learned? Okay, well, this was a good day. Uh, and Juan Carlos was just great. Um, it's nice to hear that I don't have to change what I eat, you know, that much. I didn't really realize that how I eat and how much I eat is just as important as what I eat. I mean, I've always been fixated on what I eat, but then Juan Carlos really explained it in a way that I'd never heard before. So it seems a lot easier now. And then Bob, 
uh, he kind of let me know that um, staying active really isn't that hard. So just getting out and even walking a little yeah. is really a good start. Um, so I think overall what I've learned is that I can make small changes that will really make a difference. And I learned that I like pear crisp. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really it's great that uh, Lisa doesn't have to make special meals, just make things like we always have with some small changes. And if I know my mom, she'll get this under control soon enough. And since diabetes can be hereditary, it's probably a good thing for me to know as much as I can too. And you know, I think you've been a great, great student, and it wasn't so bad after all. No, <laughs> actually not at all. I mean, I thought I was going to be um, bombarded with these things that were going to be impossible to do. Nope, it's just really not that way. It really is, as you said, all about adding up all the little things and expanding on what you were already doing, and hopefully you learned a few more things to make managing your diabetes easier. Oh yeah, I have definitely. And I just want to thank, I want to thank all oh, of you. Oh, everyone, look, the whole gang is here. I mean, coming over here and then helping me out, I really, really appreciate it. So one last thing, uh, if it's okay with you, we'd like to come back in a couple of months and see how you're doing. Okay, we'd love to have you all. Does that mean that you're gonna make another pear crisp? <laughs> <laughs> By then, you'll be making it for us. Oh. oh. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so we're off, uh, see you in a couple months. Hey, say goodbye to Molly for oh, me. Oh, I will. I will. <laughs> oh, thank you so I'm much. I'm sure that you will do great. Oh. Can't wait to see her. We're Hello. back. Hi, Lisa. Oh, hi. It's so good to see you. You look great. Thanks. Oh, we're all checking you out. Looking Sorry. Fabulous. Fabulous. Oh, please, please come on in. Too. Oh. You got a twinkle in your eye and a I smile do. on your face. That's all good. Well, thanks so much for coming back. Well, we came back two months later as we promised. Yes. We wanted to see how you were doing. Did our day with you make a big difference in your oh, life? Absolutely. Yeah. This really, really has. I have a big surprise for you guys. What'd you do? Follow oh, me. I can't wait to all see right. it. Wow. Wow. Oh. Voila. This looks wonderful. Did you do all this? No, actually, Bert did. Can you believe it? Because I would not have. I'm a bona fide <laughs> gourmet. Who knew? Impressive. I mean, very impressive. Mm -hmm. Thank hey, you. let's eat. Come okay, on. have hey. a seat, please. Oh, sorry. All right. Hey, look at this. Pear crisp. <laughs> it's become our favorite. Wonderful. Good Took the taker. lessons to heart. Yeah. Bon appetit. <laughs> This was terrific. Did you try some of our suggestions? He did. He has really taken all this to heart. <laughs> well, if it tastes good and it's good for her and mm -hmm. the rest of us, why not? Did you notice the varieties and the portions, huh? <laughs> he was listening. <laughs> How about physical activity? Have you been keeping active? I have. Actually, I've been doing pretty good. Um, I, I had a full checkup at the doctor's and we came up with some things that I really enjoy to keep me active. So I'm getting in some good fitness. And, oh, and I've also lost some weight. Oh, oh Jets. Mom is doing so great. She even has enough energy to help me keep up with little Dougie here. Whoa. <laughs> Sometimes even more than me. <laughs> she even uh, wears out Molly now sometimes, mm -hmm. taking those walks. Poor Dougie. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. How about, uh, have you been stretching and uh, mm -hmm. lifting weights or soup cans? Uh, I, well, I don't really do the soup cans that much, <laughs> I have to admit, but I am doing the stretching before I go out for my walks, and it seems to help. I definitely feel like I have more energy. I gotta say, I'm so proud of you. I really think you should all be proud of yourselves. I know it's only been two months, but yeah. it's a lifetime effort, but you've got just such a great start and you're progressing so well. Oh. Well, you guys got me. I mean, they'll tell you that before you were coming, I mean, on that first day, I just didn't know what to expect and didn't know how much help you'd really be. But now I'm doing even better, and I must say that you have really helped me and my family. And the funny thing about this whole thing is that I didn't have to do much more than take some small positive steps and continue in the right direction, just like you guys told me. I mean, it's the little things that really make a difference. 
and I know it's only been uh, two months since your first visit, but I feel like I've made some good changes. Uh. And my doctor and I have come up with a few new changes to try that I think I'm actually ready for. You have all been so helpful. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for writing <laughs> us. Thank you, thank you. Hey, did you like my pear crisp? I did like your <laughs> pear crisp. It was awesome.